health practitioner Samir Ali is back to continue sharing the knowledge on proper food combining. This is part two. If you didn't hear part one, uh, you need to check that out when the replay comes. I've been properly combining my meals for three months now, and I've lost weight without trying or changing anything else. I wasn't trying to lose weight. It just lets me know I'm digesting and eliminating differently, more effectively. Then we'll get to know my special guest, Mariah Monique. If you're interested in getting sponsorship for your project or upcoming event, you want to get to know her. If you want to participate on the show today, feel free to zoom in using the link, which you can find on my Facebook page, Xavier Fox, or join the public Facebook group, Let's Talk About It with Xavier Fox, where you can get all the show info and interact with the personalities on the show. So now let's get to it. Hey, Samir, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. How about yourself? Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. That is good. So today we're continuing on this journey of proper food combining. Yes. So the last show we discussed the, uh, the digestive system. We discussed the enzymes that are needed and where they come from. Uh, starting with the three enzymes that are in your right hand on your three right, uh, your fingers, your thumb, your forefinger, and your index. The enzymes in your tongue. Um, the small intestine, the pancreas, what comes from the uh, gallbladder, and uh, the pancreas itself. So these enzymes are needed for digestion, depending upon what it is you eat. And I like how you mentioned that you were you have tried the proper food combining and, and how you naturally lost weight and you naturally uh, you know, this happened as a natural occurrence without you having to do any exercising. Nope. I haven't done any, well, I do, I walk every day, but I mean, I haven't been in the gym, like pumping and, you know, really, I haven't counted any calories. I haven't, you know, any of that stuff right. been living life pretty naturally. And it just came right off. Came right off. So everybody has a natural body weight that their body is naturally going to go to if you just, but, you know, do the right thing. <clears throat> now, of course, uh, if you're trying to body build or, you know, if you want to be, because everybody, you know, always seems to think, uh, you know, bigger is better or more is better. But your body tells you, you know, what's the ideal weight for its own health. You know, we, we are designed to uh, have our own weight. You know, it's actually built in. But, you know, we're human beings and we know everything. So we're not satisfied with the way we look. So, you know, we want to be, we want to be bigger. You know, we want more muscles or we want bigger butts. Or, you know, we want, you know, well, you know, well, they just want them wider hips, hips or whatever the case may be. And so what we're doing is we're actually forcing our bodies to be something that is really uh, originally not really designed to be. It, although we may carry the weight very well, we don't necessarily understand or know how much um, stress we're putting our system under, forcing it to be at something that it, it, it naturally shouldn't be. And then on the other hand, you know, you also have people who are trying to lose weight because they're already not doing proper food combining. Most of America doesn't. And so they are keeping on those extra pounds. And like you were just saying, adding that stress to your joints and all of the other stuff. Exactly. So again, that's why I always emphasize, this is why it's called the standard American diet. And that's an acronym for SAD. It's very sad, standard American diet. So we were taught, of course, that <clears throat> we need everything in one meal all at one time. And this has been like, I remember you saying that that's a catchphrase, meat and potatoes. Yep. That's a catchphrase, which it is. It is a catchphrase. Um, Everything is meat and potatoes. And everywhere you go, you know, you're asked, you know, do you want <clears throat> fries with your burger? Do you want potatoes with your steak? Uh, do you want, you know, rice, which is a starch, you know, carbohydrate? Do you want ri rice with your fish, your salmon? It comes with rice. What kind of rice do you want? And 
people tend to look at you kind of crazy when you tell them you don't, and they immediately want to know why. Yeah. And it's the strangest thing because if you eat something artificial, uh, energy drink uh, with, with blue flavoring, blue, and, you, and it says on there, you know, FD and C blue number one, all colored uh, food dyes are made from petroleum, which is crude oil. So any food coloring that you have, they stopped using insects because they were using bugs at one point. I know Red 40 was a uh, an Asian beetle. Oh my God. They were using that for Red number 40. But now uh, across the board, well, the rest of them definitely were petroleum. You can look it up what is food color and, and the word petroleum will come up there's no way in the first further, further stretch of your imagination can you convince anybody with any common sense that you're supposed to be consuming petroleum when i learned that um red and yellow food dyes cause cancer i cut them out immediately and here's something that's really interesting samir um because i was telling you i was looking to get some uh, sorbet because mm -hmm. i wanted you know, I was I didn't want to eat the cow pus, so I didn't want the ice cream, even though I wound up getting ice cream. But anyway, um, I was looking at the sorbet because it's water-based. Do you know they have red food coloring in it? Yeah. I'm like, for I her, didn't know that, but yeah, I'm not surprised. It's raspberry sorbet, and it has right. red food coloring in it. Right, yeah. And so you 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 have to wonder with them knowing all of these different things, what is the intent <coughs> of this corporation that they purposely put these different, you know, chemicals or dyes or, you know, uh, non-foods in combination with your real food or semi-real food and, you know, sell you on this bursting flavor or this amazing taste. Again, Everybody, the majority of people all over the world are taste trained. You know, we're taste, we're chasing taste buds. You know, and that that causes you to live to eat and not eat to live. Um, the food networks is probably one of the biggest food net uh, networks in in uh, mainstream media now. You know, everything is food, 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 food. It's like they're making food an addiction, like it's a drug. Oh, and, it, and it is. It is. Guess who has a cooking show? You'll never guess when I say this name. Don't say Shaquille O'Neal. Trick Daddy. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on. <laughs> You're right. I would have never. I would have never guessed that. He got that. a cooking show. And he's oh. cooking all that down home. I mean, all the bad stuff. Right. All the bad yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, Trick love the kids. <laughs> and but the thing Trick doesn't love is proper food combining because Trick doesn't know about it. Right. Right. So, you know, there's this big argument and claim. You know, you got this side over here saying, Oh, you shouldn't eat this. You got another side over here saying, oh, it's okay to eat that. Then they're coming up with claims, you know, on both sides. It's like ping pong back and forth. So, um, <clears throat> learn proper food combining because just because your body can, can produce each of the enzymes that are necessary for digestion of any food that you consume, does it mean that those enzymes are supposed to be in the environment of digestion at the same time? All of your proteins, whether you're, they're vegetarian protein or animal protein, that is required to digest in an acidic environment because proteins digest acidically. Fruits and vegetables, on the other hand, they digest in an alkaline state. Now, the design of vegetables is that they're supposed to lower the acidic environment of digestion so it's not too acidic. But when you have nothing but proteins, like what we mainly do at breakfast, eggs, that's protein, 
You throw some cheese in there, which is another protein because it comes from milk because milk is a protein. It's a liquid protein. And then you have your bacon. That's another protein. You have your toast with the jelly on it. So those are your starches and your sugars. <clears throat> then you have your orange juice or your milk to wash it all down. But you don't have any, you know, green leafy vegetables. And the citrus fruit, you should have drank that before at least 25 to 30 minutes before you started eating that meal. But we consume it together. So we have the orange juice putrefying because it has to wait for all of this hard food that you just consume to digest. You just mix uh, sugar uh, with, with a carbohydrate, which is a no-no. And so there's no, no enzymes that you help your body to have in, in, in uh, to assist it with the, 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 uh, uh, the act of digestion. You didn't consume any green leafy vegetables to help you digest. You didn't consume any papaya or kiwi or uh, uh, pineapple. Like if you eat kiwi, kiwi contains an enzyme that breaks down animal protein. And it contains an enzyme that is used in meat tenderization, as well as papaya, as well as pineapple. If you consume kiwi 15 to 30 minutes prior to any meal, you have provided your system with the enzymes needed to break down the animal protein. And you have uh, strengthened your kidneys to help digest the, the protein that you're getting ready to put down. Now, Generally, we're taught that we should eat the fruit after the meal, which is insane. That's insanity. But we don't know any better, standard American diet. So the reason we do these things is because it seems like it's the natural thing to do. So we rush to the meat, we rush to the protein. We, 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 we jab that fork into the eggs with that cheese because we, we can't wait to taste that flavor. We... We, we, we grab that bacon because we can't wait to taste that flavor. The first thing you do is not going to be sip the milk or sip the orange juice before you consume the, the flavor that you are, um, you know, uh, most drawn to depending upon that meal first. And then you consume a piece of fruit afterwards, you basically just created a, a, a bomb in your stomach, you know, and believe it or not, feces is not supposed to have an odor. Hmm. Things like that are, are unheard of. Well, you know, I think everybody that goes in public restrooms is practicing bad food combining because, you know, you walk in a public restroom and sometimes that smell will run you right back out of there. I, I you know, <clears throat> I have practiced the Islamic faith and I'm currently still practicing the Islamic faith and I've walked in a public bathroom and it smells so bad. I said Jesus' name. <laughs> you like, if he can Is help, it, I need it now. <laughs> I, whoever, I'm calling on whoever right now. <laughs> I feel you. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I didn't know that until um, I actually went to go live in Vegas. And it's amazing how when you are prone to studying something or anything that you're studying, how things start coming to you, like everything gets aligned. Everything just starts to, to align or drawn to you. If you want to study insects, all of a sudden you may meet people who are into studying insects or you may go into Target or your next bookstore and they got to sell on, on books about insects. It's amazing how this stuff happens. So I'm in Vegas and I met this guy named Ronaldo Malinaldo. He was one of the, he was responsible along with Chuck Norris for bringing kickboxing to America. 
He was the world champion in kickboxing and one of the uh, senior representatives of the Chihar Karate Federation. And um, <clears throat> he was a, um, I can't believe, an astrophysicist. Astrophysicist. And he was the first one to introduce me to alkaline water. This was back in 2003. And he taught me about the parts of Permillion and everything else. And so I started to drink this water. And next thing you know, I'm, I'm combining it with what I knew. And as he was teaching me, he said to me out of his mouth, this man has degrees. He, he was actually, um, and I, I think this is okay to say, but he was uh, black ops for the uh, government, uh, special forces. <clears throat> and this man came to me and told me that I am, that he is my student when it comes to health. Like they didn't see me coming. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of people. I, I get um, inboxes from people that listen to you. You have definitely have a following for sure. <laughs> and so, I, and you know, I'm not into accolades and, you know, calling myself doctor or that. I, I could care less about that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I could care less about that. You know, it's God's knowledge and I'm just sharing it, you know. God taught it to me and I, and, and I love sharing it with other people. So that's when I discovered, cause I went deeper into my studies. I discovered mucoid plaque and impact fecal matter. And so it was from him that I, I learned that feces is not supposed to have a smell. And so when you properly combine your food, you could basically pass wind and not smell a single thing if you're combining your food right. When you have an odor to your gas that you pass out of your rear end, that is an indicator that you ate something improperly or that was not good for you based on your genetic design, whether it be your physiology, your metabolism, your metabolic rate, you know? And so <clears throat> there's a big argument about should we or should we not eat meat? Okay, rightfully so. And, and I'm, I'm not refuting any of the claims, you know, but there are some factors that are left out that are arguable. One of them being is that Let's just say hypothetically, I don't know exactly for sure that a cow reached adulthood after a year. I know dogs do. I don't know how long it takes a baby calf from birth, uh, you know, from birth to, uh, to, to reach a full adulthood. So let's just say hypothetically that it takes a cow a year to become an adult. Okay, fine. Your body is designed to digest a cow that takes a year to grow to adulthood. It's not designed to digest a cow that became an adult in three months. So the system in which they altered to speed up the adulthood of that cow for mass production is part of the problem why meat is bad or pig is if you eat, you know, if you eat pig, whatever. <clears throat> Your system is not designed to do that. Your system is not designed to eat seedless grapes or seedless watermelon, although they feed it to. So when meat didn't become a factor until they started mass producing it because we were raised on eating meat all our lives. And, and now granted, you know, some things people were developing when they were getting, you know, older and you expected that okay you old you 75 you 80 okay 80 years old you got diabetes nobody's really tripping 
Oh, you 82 and you're developing cancer. Okay, nobody's tripping. Oh, you 55 with cancer. Oh, well, you've been smoking it since I've been knowing you and I'm a kid. So, okay, you got cancer. <clears throat> but now you have kids coming up with this stuff. Well, you know, if you have a child that's drinking energy drinks, which is caffeine, which is shrinking their arteries and veins, it's carbonated, which is robbing their bloodstream of oxygen, which creates a, a very acidic environment, which sets up the environment for all kinds of host of health problems. Absolutely. Carbonation drinking, is horrible. Right. And then they have crude oil, which is petroleum from the dye that, of the flavored soda with the caffeine that they're drinking. What they're drinking alone can cause arteriosclerosis and heart disease. Being sedentary is the number one cause of heart disease. And most children today don't go outside and ride their bikes or their skateboards like we did when we were growing up. They're sitting in front of a video game. And they're eating a snack that's high in sodium that has petroleum color, food coloring, high in sodium that has artificial flavorings artificial preservatives and then they're drinking a carbonated drink which is soda or whatever to wash it down that's their snack until they eat dinner and if their parents have not been uh health conscious or you know informed of proper food combining what are they doing they're having a burger with fries with their ketchup and another soft drink flavored soda which has formaldehyde in all colored sodas so you have the combination of formaldehyde the combination of crude oil the combination of carbonation which is robbing the bloodstream and the bones of oxygen and it's shrinking and deteriorating the bones and caffeine is shrinking your bones the acid in sodas is uh deteriorating your bones and people want to know why children are coming up with diabetes or cancer or arteriosclerosis or heart disease. It's not because they're consuming animal products. It's because they're consuming genetically modified animal products along with being sedentary and consuming all of these other things, which is part of improper food combining on top of that. Don't forget osteoporosis because, um, the soda, to, the consumption of sodas leads to osteoporosis. I told my mom that when I learned it years ago, back in my 30s, she later, because she told me I wasn't a doctor, so she wasn't going to listen to me, but you know, you don't have to be a doctor to have information. <laughs> um, she didn't listen to me and she kept drinking her Pepsis, you know, a couple times a day. And she does now have osteoporosis. And I was at the doctor with her one day and, um, I, I asked him right in front of her. I just want to see what he was going to say. Actually, I didn't know if he was going to say the same thing I had been telling her or not. I said, what leads to osteoporosis? And he said, sodas, the carbonation in sodas. He said, I've been telling, but he said my mom's name. I've been telling her for years to stop drinking those sodas. And she just was like, <clears> she <throat> loved her soda. So now you love this soda so much that now you have to deal with pain because your bones are brittle and dry from drinking exactly. soda that takes the oxygen out of your bones. It and the people, and you know, the first thing a lot of people will say, well, I don't drink that much. What is that supposed to mean? You have spare oxygen in your blood or spare oxygen in your bones? What do you and mean people you don't, don't realize drink that much? It's a continual thing. So even if you only drink a cup a day, you're drinking a cup every day for 365 days a year for however many exactly. years that is. So that's exactly. a lot of soda. But here's the other part of that, especially for women, because you guys lose a lot of calcium during your menstrual cycle. So you're losing calcium. That's why it's very important for women to take calcium or to consume a lot of green leafy vegetables, chlorophyll, whatever, um, to replace the calcium that they're losing. You all have an amazing system because you have to carry life. You have to, you know, help us reproduce, you know. Uh, that's why it's called, you all have the honor of being the help mate. You help us mate because we can't mate with each other. Mm -hmm. we, we can't mate by ourselves, you, you know. 
and, and I'm and I'm not uh, saying anything against anybody's you know lifestyle, but you know, let's just face it: none of us are going to be here without a heterosexual act. Period. Right. So what? Uh oh, you disappeared. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Where'd you go? <clears throat> Hello? When you have, yeah, okay. I'm here. Hello? Yeah, you had dropped out for a minute. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had a call coming in. Uh, when you have calcium every 20, every 19 to 21 days that is starting to decrease in your body, along with a very bad diet, improper food combining, and you're consuming a formaldehyde soda that contains carbonation. For whatever reason, energy drink, it doesn't matter. You're going to develop osteoporosis. You are on your way to developing. And it's just only so much after a while your body's going to say, you know what? I can't hang no more. I tried fighting it. We're out of antitoxins. We're out of, you know, whatever it is we had when we were younger. We're out of it. So this, it is what it is right now. I met a lady when I was in Henderson, Nevada. <clears throat> She was fairly young. She had to be, you know, 30s, you know, oh, that's 40s. Young. That's pretty young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty young. Um, and in my mind, I'm thinking, why is she walking with this limp? And she worked at the... Um, the uh, pastry place, you know, in the mall. So I was doing security, you know, so I walk up and down. And after a while, everybody gets to know me. I'm the new security guy. So after a while, everybody got to know me. Hey, how you doing? You know. So I asked her one day when I was outside, <clears throat> I was, uh, you know, making my rounds. And she happened to be getting off. She was going to her car. I said, hey, so and so, how you doing? She said, hey, how you doing? And I said, can I ask you a question? She's like, yeah, sure. I said, who did you kick so hard that you start limping like that? Mm -hmm. I made a joke out of it, right? She said, oh, no. Um, the cartilage in my hip and in my knee, in her, yeah, in her hip and her knee is deteriorating. I said, that sounds like uh, drinking, you know, soda. I said, <clears throat> soda contains formaldehyde. And the caffeine shrinks your bones and the acid deteriorates your bones. And she immediately said, I'm not giving up my soda. I'm not giving up my soda. Repeated it like that. I said, but it's it's deteriorating your health. I'm not giving up my soda. Like she 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 went from this nice person to having an attitude towards me as if I was one of her enemies. Right. It's amazing how people are addicted. Like when you said somebody told you that you're not a doctor, your mother, right? <clears throat> Do I need to be a doctor to have common sense? That's what I said. But that my, my mom and dad used to tell me that all the time because as I learned stuff, I was studying holistic health at the time. You know, I actually thought about becoming a certified uh, holistic health practitioner. So I was studying a lot of stuff. And as I learned different things, I would share it with them. And they, that's what they would both say. You're not a doctor. Yeah, you're not a doctor. And so, again, getting back to the argument of, you know, should you or should you not eat meat, that's a personal choice. There's nowhere in the Bible that God specifically said, we should not eat meat because I didn't design you to not eat meat. And everything in the Bible, for the most part, is metaphoric. So it's left up into interpretation. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, there are instances where people in the Bible were eating meat, you know. There's, there's a passage in the Bible where God ordered people to bake fresh cow dung and to eat that. Ew. Go figure. That's in the Bible. So go figure, I'm, you know, hey, 
We can't eat meat, but we can eat cow dung, right? Okay, yeah, all right. No, thank you. <laughs> right. So, you know, go figure. Um, you have countries like Canada and Argentina that are on the top 10 for not having heart disease, and they consume more meat than a lot of other countries. Canada, if anybody's ever lived in Canada or know anyone who's visited Canada, they know that Canada does not allow a single type of food from America to cross their border. And they publish every year the data of heart disease and other diseases that Americans have. And it, the, the government says that America is killing its citizens through its food. Mm -hmm. If you go to Canada and eat any meat, meat and you come back to America and eat the meat over here, you're going to get sick. Or you may get sick from eating the meat over there because they don't put chemicals in their meat. They don't speed up the, digest, uh, the, the growth process of their food. <clears throat> hmm. You have to ask, what was the purpose of God creating a cow? What do they serve in the ecosystem? Just to eat grass? And if they were a beast of burden, okay, I'll give you that. But then God also knew in, in, in God's foresight that we would have technology and have machines to do that. We went from horses to cars. We went from horses to pickup trucks. We went from horses to, you know, mass machines that haul things. So we don't need beast of burden anymore. We don't plow with horses anymore. We plow with, you know, powerful machines made by John Deere or whatever. <laughs> So what was the purpose of us having cows, God creating cows? The purpose is because they're food for us. They serve no other purpose in the ecosystem. Chicken, what purpose do chicken serve? Mm -hmm. now, let's get realistic. What purpose do, you know, so, I mean, you know, you got to, It's like religion. People have a belief they get so emotionally attached to it, they'll come up with every reason why their religion is better than the other religion. I've never known Moses to be in an argument with Jesus. I never know Abraham to say something bad about them. I never know Noah to say the ones coming after me don't believe them, believe my doctrine. None of the people or the characters in the Bible were disputing each other. Why are we disputing each other about whose belief is? It, it, it's, it's insanity. People don't get it. They just, they, they don't get it. Divide and conquer. I, exactly. The same God, all of them talking about the same God. So if you and I, and let's say 10 of our other friends that we may have in common, whomever they may be, all of us shop at this particular Walmart or Target. Let's just say Target. But I'm going to listen to <coughs> your argument about why you should shop at that Target versus the, your friend argument as to why that's the best Target to shop at. We all talking about the same Target. So how are we missing the mark and being so divided? when all of the characters in the Bible and all the characters in the Quran are the same people and they're saying the same thing, worship the one true God. How do we have hundreds of different religions? There's 73 sects of Christianity, 72 in Islam and 71 in Judaism. How is that even possible? Well, you know, God is not the author of confusion, so I'll just throw that in there. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But I'm and you know why? So. And, and you know why God had to say that? Because he knew how to die on any we was about to be. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, again, Canada, Argentina, and, 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 and that's just the name, two of the top 10 of the countries that consume meat large amounts of meat and they are nowhere near on the top 10 list. They're not even in the top 100. They're not even in the top 
500 of uh, countries with heart disease. <clears throat> so meat isn't the problem. The way that America is genetically modifying, speeding up the aging process, the reproductive process, and the chemicals in which they are injecting uh, this meat and the overconsumption of meat combined with proper food combining is why people are now having arteriosclerosis and heart disease at an alarming rate. <clears throat> so you may argue, you know, the fat from meat is bad for your blood. Again, <clears throat> why do you think God created sulfur? Generally, you consume meat with onions, garlic, shallots, cruciferous vegetables, which are very high in sulfur. It is to dissolve the fat so that your body can turn it into omega-3 fatty acids. Just like if you don't consume, if you consume meat, that's a big job. <clears throat> are you giving your body the tools to handle that big job? I need some kiwi before you eat that. I'm going to need some pineapple before you eat that or some papaya before you eat that. Or I'm going to need some ginger before you eat that. Those are the four foods that contain enzymes that are used for meat tenderization. And those are the four foods that should be consumed before you digest animal protein. So can you- Not necessarily a, all of them. Can you create but, you a know, marinade? At least one. Can you create a marinade with all of that stuff? Well, that's the whole point of being creative. You- how would we have all these different dishes? Uh, imagine if we didn't discover color. Everybody's car would look the same. Everybody's house, would look, everybody's outfit would look the same. Variety is the spice of life. We come up with new dishes and recipes every day. There are new styles to martial arts because of creativity. What if Bruce Lee decided that he was going to be traditional and follow everybody else's rule? He came up with his own style and he was the father, the grandfather of mixed martial arts. Because somebody wanted to be just a judo master. And judo was the, the top, like religion, you know, judo master or karate master, karate, you know. Bruce Lee said, I'm about to combine all of that. And the stuff that don't work, I'm not using it. What does work, I will use it. And he came up with Jikundo, way of the intercepting fist, as a result of that. So you have to think outside the box. This is why Einstein said that imagination was more valuable than knowledge. Without imagination, we would not have inventions. We would not have the world where we're living in. You know, we, we, would, we wouldn't go beyond. What if people told the Wright brothers, if you, God wanted you to fly, to get you wings? Where would we be at with travel? Now we have planes. Planes are used to defend our country. Planes are used to travel here. Just imagine this. So whatever you want to create with this food, go ahead and experiment. You may come up with the next new phenomenon on how to eat something because you decide to think outside the box. Yes, you can create a marinade. Mm. And it's exciting. It is. It, it is exciting because, and, and you know, uh, my, my oldest daughter is on it too. And so we are really just, you know, as mother and daughter, we're having a really great time actually discovering new things that taste good, you know, where you can, because what we do, you know, of course she wanted my opinion on how to do this because I've been doing it. So what I do is one day I have a um, starch-based um, meal. So I'll have, you know, either rice, potatoes, or pasta, and I'll have it with veggies. Well, I always make my favorite veggie pasta. I've been doing that for years because I have a, a meat detox in January, but we have a pasta or a potato, you know, and then you have a veggie, uh, a veggie meat. That's what I call it, a meatless meat. And they have some really good meatless meat products out there now. And my daughter, she has a very critical palate and she's enjoying it. She's like amazed that you know, the, these new meatless meats they have out here actually taste so good and have the same texture and everything. And so then on the next day, mm -hmm. I'll have a meat-based meal. So then we have it with all veggie. And, um, you know, I found this, uh, the, I made a sweet and sour shrimp with broccoli. Oh my God. 
And that was the first meal my daughter actually made too. When you told them how to eat, she made the sweet and sour shrimp and broccoli. And we all mm-hmm. love that. But yeah. there's so many options, you know, and it is exciting to to discover mm-hmm. different ways to eat healthy, you know. Yeah, and, and so, <clears throat> like I said, people do consume too much meat because they don't know any better. Your body can only assimilate between 33 to 35% of protein at any one given meal. Now, we're eating that times three. Sometimes times four or five, you know, if you have your bacon, you have your eggs, you know, and then, you know, you have your cheese on that. Because believe it or not, cheese is a protein because the simple fact is made from milk and milk is a, a liquid protein. Uh, you have your sandwich for lunch, whatever that may be, your chicken sandwich or your hamburger. Then you have dinner and you got your steak and potatoes or you got your salmon or whatever. You just had a whole lot of protein and you probably more than likely improperly combined it with other foods. So your body never really got to digest it at all. You're going to feel full, but your body couldn't take any real benefit from it. Mm, That's important. Food is not supposed to cause you to become fat. Who've ever heard of that? If it makes you fat, it's not food. Or you are consuming too much, which you're not doing it in moderation, and you're improperly combining it. But see, that's the design of God that we have a brain that can figure out how to split the atom. We have a brain to figure out how to defy gravity to put a man on the moon. We have a brain to figure out how we can go in the ocean and discover what's in the ocean because we, you know, we came up, we discovered light bulbs and everything else. God just put us down here with a ball of dirt that contained all these minerals and mountains and waters and seas and everything else. And he said, this is your home. So we had to get together and discover all this stuff, trial and error. So we learned these things. And now we have this technology, not to defy God, but to say, wow, God, this is deep stuff. You know, that you allowed us to do this. Go inside the human body and see how this works or that works or what's going on or what this disease actually looks like. We had to discover that. Who'd have thought that you could have made glass from sand? Mm. Think about that. That's that's amazing in itself. So we use these things, you know, to learn, you know, and that's the beauty of it. You know, basically that's the beauty of it. Um, animals in nature they don't have different blood types that I know about I've never heard of that we do people may argue well you know if God wanted us to have be meat eaters we would have fangs well a gorilla has fangs they don't eat meat (laughs) and if I ate everything that that gorilla ate every day there's no way on heaven, in heaven or on earth, that I'm going to be as strong or nearly as strong as that gorilla, even though I'm consuming its exact same diet. Because a gorilla doesn't have to go to Planet Fitness to get strong because its genetic makeup automatically makes it strong like that genetically. People, on the other hand, we have to jog. We have to lift weights consistently for a certain amount of time. We have to bulk up. We have to manipulate our physiology in order to consider to be gorilla strong, even though we're not. I don't care how big you are, strong man contest. Okay, you won. Let me see you go head to head with that gorilla. You know dang on well you ain't about to do it. Right. If I consumed everything a horse consumed, I'm never going to be as strong or as powerful or as fast as that horse because genetically I'm not designed to do that. So again, Gorillas have very pronounced fangs and they don't eat meat. So what's the purpose of their fangs? And they're completely vegetarian. 
so people want to argue if God wants us to eat meat, we just have pronounced things. Again, you know, that's that whole emotionally attachment to their belief that that's all they can see. I, uh, me personally, I would dare not say something like that because I didn't create the human body and I'm not going to say I know more than God. Oh, so <clears throat> we supposed to be vegetarian because during Adam and Eve and all the characters in the Bible and up until the, the 20th century, we didn't have technology to make concentrated powdered vegetable protein. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right <laughs> i'll just listen. we didn't have technology to make you know uh <clears throat> peels you know supplements herbs and all that everything was root tea or leaves and we had to boil it with water and sip it that way we didn't have powders we didn't have ginger powder We didn't have all this. So we we gonna say that now in the 20th century, God, we done figured it out. We don't need your knowledge anymore. We're smarter than you. We're not supposed to eat animals. So God was saying that y'all gonna eat animals until y'all figure out how to not eat animals and then tell everybody you wasn't ever designed to eat an animal. Are you very serious right now? <laughs> so I, I mean come on let's just, let's just be real about this so we have more knowledge than God now is what people are saying and they want to tell everybody how you know you're not supposed to eat meat no you're not supposed to eat meat that has been altered to become an adult at a rapid rate other than its natural rate and you're not supposed to consume any food that is injected with a bunch of excess hormones that your body doesn't know how to digest in excess it knows how to digest it in moderation but not in excess and you're not supposed to have an overconsumption of anything regardless of what it is you eat too many carrots you're liable to, to, to develop diabetes because of the sugar content in carrots and if you eat too many carrots, your skin would begin to turn orange because of the, the amount of beta carotene. And carrots are very good for you. Everything has to be in moderation, including meat, including chicken, including fish or whatever. But we got these shaker bottles because of technology. And we got these, you know, pea protein or veggie protein, you know, powders that we're going to shake up in this bottle. And then we're going to start saying that we were never designed to eat meat. Come on, let's stop that. We did not design the human body. I dare not say something like that and make that claim that I know more than God. Especially when there's no proof where God literally said that in those words. I wouldn't dare, I wouldn't dare say it. But that's just me. So, again... Meat is not the problem. The type of meat that you're eating and the fact that you're eating too much of it and the fact that you're improperly combining it is where your problem lies. Some people, and you have to learn this on your own, you may eat meat only two, three times a week or you may eat meat uh, once a day or twice a day. Now, if you're trying to bodybuild and all that, of course, you're going to need more protein, you know, and to each his own. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's a choice. That's why it's called free will. If you choose to become vegetarian, there's nothing wrong with that. That's your choice. If it's working for you, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, if you have a child or a human that wants to consume, you know, all this other stuff that's artificial or improperly combined, because you can improperly combine vegetables. Most salads are made with cucumbers and tomatoes, which should never be combined. And who would have thought that a tomato and a cucumber is improper food combining? But it is. You should never consume a tomato and a cucumber in the same meal. That's improper food combining. 
So you can improperly combine vegetables or fruits. <clears throat> So learn proper food techniques. Remember, food is supposed to be enjoyed, but because of improper food combining, people are not enjoying their food. Food has become the enemy because they have you focus on taste. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Like you were just saying, it's a lot of fun being creative and learning ways of how to create meals that are good for you properly combining the food on top of that and what happened as a natural result you said even joey is starting to look smaller in her face like the weight around her face is starting to look smaller yep and she's yep. not going to the gym she's not doing anything differently she's just properly combining food now she's still eating meat but like i was telling you and her slow down on on excessively eating it And properly combine it when you do eat it and look at what happens. So this is part two of the digestion, proper food combining. And then on the third, the next segment, we're going to get into, you know, the elimination process of it all and how it's supposed to come out of your body. So I took you from mouth. <laughs> to digestion to elimination okay I'm, I'm glad you didn't say it the way that you said it to me <laughs> you know, i had to think about it because i almost did but <laughs> so but yeah you will feel amazing but you have to know your design it's very important to know your blood type. Do not let a doctor tell you, you don't need to know that. That's BS. Yes, you do. It's your blood. You need to know it because this is your gift. Would you rather be an ant that someone steps on? Would you rather be a dog covered in fur? Would you rather be a fish that someone catches out of the water and gets his head chopped off and then somebody sitting there just delighting in the deliciousness of how you were seasoned and, 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 and sauteed or whatever, you have the most unique and powerful design out of all of creation. But God said, seek ye knowledge from the cradle to the grave. You have to seek knowledge. So what did he mean by that? Well, look at everything around us. If we didn't seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave, we wouldn't live the way we're living now. We would still be in the cave using animal skin to cover our bodies. Yeah, I mean, look, look at this whole look, radio show. I, this right. wasn't even possible, you know, 15, 20 years <laughs> ago. Now, think of, exactly. Now, how, how, how do we know radio waves that were uh, existing before the radio was existing? Think and, about that. And, you know, another thing me and my oldest daughter laugh about all the time. Remember the Jetsons when they used to talk about someday we'll be able to be on the phone and see who we talking to? And we were like, wow, that seems like such a thing of the future. Now, every day I talk to both of my kids. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, listen to this. So, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to use this as an example. I'm sure that is a, a, a thing, you know, if you're of the European race and then you have to protect yourself from the sun. But seek you knowledge from the cradle to the grave. White people came up with something to protect their skin from the sun. That's knowledge. God puts you in situations, not for you to complain or to curse God or to deny, you know, whatever. I'm not, you know, your belief is your belief. Anybody's belief is their belief. But to say, like you said, God want to be stronger. He's going to give you problems. God don't want to be smarter. He's going to give you problems. Figure it out. Oh, no wonder I went through this. Or I went through that. That, that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the whole point of it all. Like there's a reason why everything happened, whether we understand it or not. And so seek you knowledge from the cradle to the grave. Learn your body. Learn your physiology. Learn your blood type. Learn your metabolism. Learn your metabolic rate. Understand your ethnicity. Understand 
your digestive system, understand proper food combining, you will feel amazing. And I am here to attest to that. So